Hey guys, this is my introduction to dynamic programming with Fibonacci sequence as our example. Now, what's Fibonacci sequence? It's a sequence of numbers that start with ones at the beginning, two ones at the beginning. And after that, we just add the previous two numbers to get the next number. So one plus one equals two, and one plus two equals three, and two plus three equals five, and so on. And the problem here is finding the nth Fibonacci number. So if n is six, the sixth Fibonacci number is just eight. The most naive approach we can think of for this problem is a recursive one. So in this code, I'm defining my function here, fib. And if n is equal to one or two, we just return one, which is the base case. And that corresponds to the first two elements. And if that's not the case, we're just going to return the sum of the previous element and the second previous element. So this approach works, but the thing is, this is very, very inefficient. Let's see why that's the case. Here's a quick analysis of the naive recursive approach that we just talked about. Let's just say as an example, we are trying to find the sixth Fibonacci number. To do that in this approach, what we do is we ask ourselves, what's the fifth Fibonacci number? And what's the fourth Fibonacci number? And when we know what they are, we add them together to find the sixth Fibonacci number. And to find the fifth Fibonacci number, we need to find the fourth Fibonacci number, the third Fibonacci number, and then add them together. That's what this diagram shows. And as you can see, the problem with this approach is that there are a lot of duplicates in our computation. For instance, to find the third Fibonacci number, we're repeating the same process three times. And to find the fourth Fibonacci number, we're repeating the same computation twice. And that's why this is very slow. And in fact, the time it takes to find the nth Fibonacci number is about an order of two to the power of n. And dynamic programming says we can do much better than that just by storing all those intermediate results. So here's one very simple dynamic programming solution. In this example, we're gonna assume that n is larger than two just for simplicity's sake. And let's just say we're trying to find the sixth Fibonacci number as our previous example. And the first thing we do is we initialize an array of the same size as the given number. And we are initializing it to zeros here, but it doesn't matter if we initialize it to ones or negative ones. And obviously the first two elements need to be one. And we're gonna iterate this i from two, which corresponds to the third element here, to n minus one, which corresponds to the last element here. And for each i, we're gonna populate it with the sum of the previous number and the second previous number. So for the third element, we get one plus one equals two. And for the fourth element, we get one plus two equals three and five and so on. And at the end, we're just gonna return the last element in the array, which is eight in this case. This is a much better solution than the previous solution to find nth Fibonacci number. It only takes a linear time, so it's much faster. But you might say, oh, but we are using all this extra space. And if you don't like that, that's fine. You can just store the last two elements instead of everything, and you can save some space that way as well. That's it for my video. If you like this video, you might also like my video about the maximum subarray problem, for which you can also use a dynamic uh, programming solution. And if you want to watch more videos like this one, you can just click right here to subscribe to my channel. And see you soon.